here at Air Venture in the Fun Fly Zone, and one of the most fun airplanes I ever flew was something called the Gull 2000. That's been changed a little bit now. There's a letter in front of all that. It's E Gull, and uh, this one is an electric-powered aircraft. But you were here last year with a different configuration. Parts you pulled out of a motorcycle or something, right, Mark? That's right. Yeah, the system we were running last year is a. Uh, the whole system is out of a zero motorcycle. It's out of their S model with the large battery. It's uh, eight or eleven point four kilowatt hours worth of energy in the battery, and the motor was a, a forty kilowatt uh, electric motor, which uh, calculates out to be uh, fifty three horsepower. Okay, so that was a pretty potent motor, but it looked physically smaller than the one I see on here now. It is physically smaller. So what is the difference in the one we're looking at here? Well, so the motor we had before ran at uh, 4,000 RPM and required a, uh, a gearbox to reduce the speed for the long The one you had here last year with a higher power? Higher, higher RPM. Okay. And so it had to have a gearbox. This motor here is specifically designed to not require a gearbox. Ah, okay. And so the motor is bigger because it has to have more leverage to give you the, uh, you know, 2.5 times the torque that you were getting with the other motor. Now, what kind of power output does this particular motor here have? This one is a 40 to 30 kilowatt motor. And it, uh, that equates that to equates in horsepower? To 40 horsepower. 40 horsepower. Well, on a, you know, I've flown this, I believe it was with a 447 Rotax, which Similar. had that. And that thing went up like a screaming angel. So yeah. does this do well, likewise? This does, this does the same, yeah. Okay. When we're talking about horsepower and electric motors, some people think that it's different from gas, but it's not. Horsepower is horsepower. Horsepower is horsepower, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, there is a difference in torque, though, correct? In electric versus gasoline? Yeah. Give us a word of explanation about that. Well, well, electric motors have their maximum torque right up to zero. It's right at the bottom. You right got all the, the torque you need. And, okay. And so the propeller doesn't really care. A propeller will absorb power in relationship to the RPM it's traveling at. Okay. So when it starts out, it starts spinning easily. And so it doesn't really care if you've got all the torque in the world. It, it's only going to absorb what it needs in order to pick up the speed. So this should translate into uh, shorter ground rolls, faster climb angles, doesn't it? Oh yeah, when you feed in the power, you're, you're going full throttle right, <laughs> right now. But not set making yourself, a lot of noise. Huh? Set yourself back in the seat. Is that right? You can feel, you feel oh, the yeah. acceleration that demonstrably in the aircraft. Yeah, sure. Cool. Did you, uh, you've often, I'm looking kind of over your shoulder here and seeing your campground, or your camping site, and uh, you often fly these things a long way, but you can't really do that with the electric yet, right? Yeah. Okay, so in the past, Mark has traveled all the way from Santa Margarita, California to Oshkosh, which is well, more than a couple thousand miles, I think. Right, and yeah. uh, electric, that's still challenging to do. What kind of duration do you have on your on the aircraft we see right next to us, Mark? Well, I'll have to back up a little and say that last year's version had an hour and a half range, which is somewhere in the, you know, 70, 80 mile range. Okay. And uh, what we have now is half the battery size, uh, which doesn't give you half the range because you have less weight, it requires less power, and so it, it, there's kind of a... Uh, a normalization of the numbers. Then. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're getting about 40 minutes. 40 uh, minutes. Time. Okay, out of how much battery weight? It's uh, 90 pounds. 90 pounds, okay. So uh, are you able to fly this as a Part 103 Ultra Line? Yeah, the, the batteries are removable, and uh, the total volume of the batteries is less than 5 gallons. Okay. Well, um, as people look at your projects with electric over the years, and i got to back up a little bit myself and say, you have tried a lot of different engines over time, and That's in fact, sure. we're developing one of your own for a while, right. but your recent focus seems to be pretty much electric. Are you an all-electric guy today, or are you still doing gasoline engines? Well, I, I love to fly. That's, that's I noticed the, that's that. That's the yeah. priority. <laughs> and so if, if the mission requires a gas engine, then I fly that. Okay. And if the mission allows electric motor, then I will fly that. If I had my druthers, I would fly all electric, but uh, electric technology does not lend itself to easy long-distance cross-country travel at this time. Yeah, at the home base you could swap out batteries or something and, and continue flying, but right. if you're going from here to Santa Margarita to Oshkosh, you have to, to prearrange a lot of batteries to make that work. So well, we're really dependent on battery technology development, aren't we? Battery and, and charging technology. Ah, and charging, right, that's a good point. And the charging technology is basically already here. Is 
that right? Because we, we, if we use a large charger on this system, we can charge the big battery up in an hour. Oh, okay. Well, that's and pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. So if you were if you were going on a long trip, you could you could do that. Um, and yeah, yeah. You could just take a break and uh, yeah. charge for an hour. Go but you got to carry the charging system with you. Then is that a weighty proposition? Yes. Okay. At yeah. present. And also, the large charger requires a large outlet. Ah, you need a 220 or something or more. Yeah. And what we're running right now is just the standard wall outlet. Okay, 110. We just plug it into in 110. the U.S. anyway. Yeah. We have a lot of foreign visitor uh, uh, observers as well, so mm -hmm. got to keep that straight for them. What do you expect in the future? You've been following this electric uh, about as close as anyone I know in the light space, anyway. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the future for electric? Uh, my, my opinion is that, uh, uh, that over the, the years, as uh, we've developed new technologies, uh, aircraft and travel have become so much easier and everybody's going all over the place. And it's, it's uh, benefiting our society tremendously. And, and the reason why ultralights uh, were able to prosper like they have is because of the invention of the uh, die-casting technique for engines okay. that allowed the engine manufacturers to make lots of engines, more than we needed. And so then uh, these engines became available cheap and surplus. And I see where you're going. Things. Okay, Anna. And so uh, making uh, flying economical is pivotal, pivotal to the success of uh, aviation. Absolutely right. And uh, while a lot of people look at electric as being expensive because you have to pay five thousand dollars for the batteries I've gotten here. Yeah, but what do you pay for a motor? You know, this an electric motor. One offsets the other quite a bit. Yeah, it, 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 if I have an airplane that is a specific weight and needs a specific horsepower, if I put a gasoline engine on it that's that horsepower and fuel and system and all this that weight, all the rest, right? I'm going to get the same performance as if I have an electric, except for the range. I'll go uh, 300 miles instead of 70 miles ah, okay. in gasoline. And uh, so that's the basic problem right now. Uh, but I'm but I'm flying the electric one on one dollar per hour for the electricity. <laughs> and the batteries are have developed to a state of the art now, whereby they can last for 3,000 hours. Is that right? Wow! And now so, that's even since we talked. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a video right. with you, and uh, it's, it's that was not the case then. Tremendous improvement. Wow, so there's already a lot of movement in battery right. technologies, and you know, we keep reading. I try and follow the science on this a little bit, and uh, you know, there's a lot to promise about things that haven't really made it to market yet, but oh, that's normal, there's yeah. a tremendous amount of activity in this area. Yeah. Though. So we hope for great things. If somebody wanted to buy electric today, Mark, can you supply them an electric power aircraft today? Yeah. And. Um, would that be the Eagle, the, the Eagle, Eagle 2000? Is right. the, is the, and it's a single place aircraft and you can make it qualify under part 103 with the right amount of battery pack and so right. forth, and at least for flying in your own locale, yeah. which is what most people like to Well, do. Uh, a number of years ago, Mary Jones uh, did a, a survey of the ultralight community and she found that uh, the average time that an ultralight pilot flew was only 40 minutes. <laughs> and well, the you're already there then. And the maximum they flew was an hour. So we can supply that. You can supply that today. Now, yeah. I'm also looking kind of down the wing of this aircraft, and I know you make a, 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 a soaring version of your this aircraft. Is, is that it. this one? This is it. Yeah. Because in electric, you're looking for all the efficiency, all the lift you can get out of a set right. of wings. And well, we, we've had uh, a, tech, a tendency over the past to make really short wing airplanes. And it's because we run a very high lift coefficient low drag uh, airflow. And uh, so when we talk about the soaring wing, there, there it's a wing that's about almost as big as everybody else uses. <laughs> yes, right, yeah. Put and, that in perspective. But, but it has Your other ones are so short, I always felt like I could reach my arms out almost, of yeah. the cockpit and touch the wingtips. They were that small. But. And, and uh, what this, uh, uh, the advantage that the soaring wing gives for electric power is we can fly 
um, more efficiently and get a longer range carry more batteries and a dollar an hour so well, a gasoline engine that burns four gallons an hour and automobile gas say four bucks a gallon at sixteen dollars an hour uh, plus you got some other maintenance stuff that you have to add into that so it's really more than sixteen dollars an hour compared to a buck an hour right so you're kind of prepaying your fuel by buying that's those a huge batteries difference. that is a, that's a vast difference yeah. indeed and quiet smooth right. some nice attributes i finally got up in an electric aircraft myself last year yeah there was a special experience yeah well the uh, uh actually one of the design primary design parameters that i've used since i was a little kid in, in wanting to build an airplane is to make an airplane that was equal to the experience that I got when I was dreaming about flying when I was sleeping. <laughs> and well, that's a fairly high benchmark. That's I'm a guessing. very high benchmark, and, and I haven't been able to get there. I've gotten very close with this because uh, one thing we didn't have in our dreams was noise, vibration. We all know. You know, uh, right. it's an idealized cost, environment then. So yeah, frost. So and drips of oil on the floor sure, and the hangar and so that. forth. So we've uh, greatly reduced the cost. I mean, greatly reduced it, much more than than what I could have done with my Radcam engine. Cool. So that's the way. That's the reason why I set it aside is because this is just so much better. Well, I can understand that, Mark, and you've given us a lot of information about your aircraft. You know, I love your airplanes for a long time, but. Others that haven't got that magic yet but want to find out more, where can we find you on the web, Mark? We'll put it on the screen. Just tell sure. us the website. Yeah, it's uh, our uh, web address is thundergall.com. Thundergall.com. Pretty simple. Right. And uh, uh, I have an email address, too, which is thundergall, but with only one L. Okay, I see. Well, we'll send people to thundergall.com, and that's spelled the way the airplane is that's spelled, right. so we'll have that on the screen for people. More information about Mark's airplanes. I think I've done pilot reports on most of them, but not the Eagle yet. I still have to do that one. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for talking to Mark Byerly and myself here at AirVenture.